Hello my Soccer Universe final review video and we're talking of course about my Iberian review and yeah for the first time I have again I'm wearing a jersey and nothing is doubled up and that's thanks to me using the Real Valladolid shirt that I got uh, to make that and I also came to the conclusion that yeah while there are probably one or two no three La Liga teams that I would like to add I probably also should look into Portugal a little bit more which to be honest is at the moment probably the league where uh, you know uh, it's the league that I follow least but I still deem important enough to at least show results uh, and talk about it because there are still quite some big teams in there also making the Champions League sometimes a teeny bit of noise. I am of course wearing Real Madrid because they are the big winners of the La Liga weekend. I mean not only do you win the Clasico but you also have the biggest exchange in points. Uh, at the time that I'm shooting this video uh, Getafe and Celta Vigo are still in stoppage time which is the last um, uh, a game to be played but Celta Vigo 3-0 uh, up so that settles that so the result will already be uh, on the show here uh, for full results Portugal still is not everything finished you uh, stats cast will come uh, on Tuesday around lunchtime here so you will have you every, every, everything is set and yeah with me wearing Real Madrid also quick apologies to my Barcelona fan brothers yeah they beat you and yes you guys had a worse weekend than I did because not only the last clues where we all suffer but the other favorite team also lost and is not in a pretty serious situation but we'll talk about that but uh, as I do with the other three videos we have double leagues I first want to start with a small league but honestly in Portugal um, it is and I repeat myself it's always the same phenomenon that there are the, the big teams then there's maybe Braga and another team hanging around behind and then the rest can go anywhere in many ways. And so it was again that all big three won uh, with Porto 3-1 at Tondela. Uh, Sporting 1-0 at Morerenge. Morerenge? I don't know how to say it. <laughs> I need to ask a Portuguese, which, yeah, uh, if I go more often to the office, we have Portuguese people that I could ask. And then uh, Benfica only 1-0 at Vizela, which actually is enough that you will see in the stats cast that Porto is now slightly ahead in the expected standings of uh, Benfica because um, they had a bigger boost in their ratings. And also Braga today beat uh, Gilles Vicente 1-0, so also the fourth team won. And that's it for poor Portugal. I think we go fully on with La Liga. Um, first game that I want to talk a little bit. And you know, I, on, I only on Sunday I got to see a little teeny bit of highlights or a little bit there. So all the other, other, other games I didn't see all, all the much. But I saw that Valencia had a rather remarkable comp against Mallorca. Who had two men sent off, although the last one was already when it was 2 2 uh, lay, lay down. But Angel and the uh, Ongo Badia Kabi saw Mallorca 2 0 up. Uh, then they had Lee Kang um, sent off in the 55th, and then in stoppage time, Gedesh in the 98th minute, uh, Gaia get an equal. So all both goals late in stop stoppage time, and then the 99th, Sanchez is sent off with a second uh, red card so that was a remarkable torture of, of, of events another remarkable thing i mean my big question is where did all the goals in la liga come from la liga was just about in goal average about 2.2 and now we had a round with tons of goals especially sunday and the classico was the worst uh of that and so uh suddenly the average with one round went over 2.3 still horrible in the in the context but maybe the temperatures are, are dropping and in Spain the offenses are coming but it was a, a super super goal field round so again where are all the goals coming from suddenly uh, and Sevilla Levante eight goals I mean Sevilla scoring five goals when did he hear this hear that the last time but also conceding three I mean Sevilla to me is this classic uh, I don't want to say 
they are not the typically only one nil win but uh Sevilla is not an exciting team to watch they have a highly effective team uh but they have quite some um how do I say a quality in there as well 3-1 up at the half uh, through Torres, Rafa Mir and Diego Carcal with Ole Morales uh, pulled one one back to make it 2-1 uh, momentarily. And then when you think at El Adadi in the 50th scores, uh, make, make it for one game done. No, Morales uh, and Melero, Morales with the second, in 55th and 61st, kind of pull it back, make it 4-3, game on. But then, uh, I guess, uh, after Navalas in 64th, not long after, makes it 5-3, kind of killing off of the game. But that was a cra uh, crazy one in many, many, many ways. And maybe Sevilla is really could be a team that could like supplant maybe Barcelona at the num as the number three team at the, at the moment. Because speaking of Bar Barcelona, I mean, if you saw the game and you have a very blaugrana glasses uh, glasses on uh you would think that yeah maybe barcelona should have taken the lead i mean and the sergino there's a chance he has to put this on goal uh and barcelona was kind of in there but the problem was that on the left flank you know where uh you had um vinicius jr r uh, running against mingesa this Speed mismatch that clearly decided the Classico. Uh, what also decided the Classico is Classico debutant uh, David Alaba, Austrian, winning the ball. I think then playing it to Vinicius Jr. He wanted to have Hebe Vinicius Jr. plays it to Rodrigo. He who then sees Alaba darting forward exactly in in in, in the hole, and suddenly Al Alaba, a defender, finds himself at the box. And then you saw that Alaba actually is not a learned defender. He actually wants to play in the offensive midfield. And so when he's there, I mean, he said in his interview after, what was I thinking? Yeah, I want to. I was thinking, yeah, I'm going to score now. And that's exactly what he did with a wonderful strike. A uh, much a deceivingly uh, difficult strike uh, at that. And in many ways, that set Real Madrid on the way. Uh, there was a penalty call where I think Vinicius Jr. wanted to have one, which I didn't think one. However, I think a Barcelona could have had a claim for a penalty. I, this handball, I did not really understand. I, I could have said that PK uh, was a little bit upset. However, I gotta say, despite all their efforts, Barcelona uh, never seemed to threaten. And the Real Madrid was rather cruising. You could see that they are the way more experienced team in that game. And... I could see this already from watching here and there. You know, there was also PSV Ajax and a little bit of the end of the last game there. But, you know, I was always peeking at the Klaus Classico because, of course, this is nominally the biggest matchup in the world. Although this was probably, the, to me, the least interesting Classico in years because it was missing kind of some star power. I didn't think that the teams are meeting on an eye-to-eye -eye, uh, level in many ways. It is not the Classico that we had like 10 year, years ago when this was the high time of the classical though they have now their own branding which please get rid of that immediately we don't need that um and so yeah uh barca was pressing and then uh, ran into a counter attack where lucas vasquez uh can slot at home uh in the nine the third at which point i actually wanted to switch, switch over but Sergino Des, despite his big miss, he uh, assists Aguero for his uh, final goal. I think if Aguero is kind of fit, he maybe can... You know, there is something there for Boris personally, but she's still destroying Aguero is definitely on the way down. So I don't know, and I'm, I still don't know what they were thinking with Luke de Jong, uh, to be honest. Yes, he won Sevilla and Europa League title. Yes, he can be a goal scorer. He is not a Barca player. He's absolutely not a bar bar bar, so he should not even be near that shirt. Uh, but there are many others in this squad that should be in there. So yeah, uh, we gotta see how it will go for Barcelona. I there is maybe a chance that they might not make the Champions League this season. Uh, I still think they are talented enough to finish top four because you know Sevilla, yes, but can Real Sociedad go in there? That's what I'm not uh, sure, and we'll talk about them in just a sec. Because um, another kind of crazy game was uh, Betis against Rayo. Uh, Betis 2 0 up 22nd and 24th. Marina Juanmi seemingly going over over uh, uh, Rayo's side. Who I, I, I repeat myself, 
I think they have the best set in La Liga, and I don't know, uh, probably uh, La Liga jersey review is, com is coming up soon. However, um, Rayo, who had a really, really good start, pulled one back just before the half uh, through uh, Ndeka, and then Garcia in the 65th equalizes, but then a penalty in the 75th for, um, set. Sets it, uh, Betis is well, though Rayo really tried to get some something there, but that was a pretty big win for Betis, who are, as you can see, the second biggest winners there. And uh, Rasos that could have probably even been a bigger winner than Real Madrid if they would have held on to, to the lead. Uh, wonderful passing move. Uh, Cicerlo uh, scored the first one. I mean, um, the assist by Isaac was great, but the pass before and so on was that was really a real sauce it out at their very 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 best all right after that isaac makes it two nil and you think oh this is a statement win for real sauce it out who have a hard time beating the really big teams so you really thought maybe uh bet uh real sauce that can show yeah we can beat the defending champions however luis suarez heads one in in the 61st and then the game is already slightly a little bit tighter the crowd is involved and then you get what you didn't get uh, in the midweek. Uh, you get a panel penalty, you get kind of was softish, I would say. And Luis Suarez converts and makes it 2 2 in 77th. And Atletico Madrid again. They need to be seemingly two goals down to really turn it on. Uh, and as I said, Celta Vigo wins against Getafe 3 0. So, yeah, very goal filled round. Uh, rather impressive, I gotta say. I want to see more goals in La Liga for sure. In any case, please drop a line below if you want to add anything to what I covered in this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want. I always mess this up. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And I will talk to you soon. All the best. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.